Hello everyone, and as always, welcome back to Strategy Gaming Dojo, where we find, learn, and play one more turn of the great strategy games. And today, back into Gary Grigsby's War in the Pacific Admirals Edition, this is our Let's Play by email against the devilish Mr. Laudrick. And it is now February 23rd, it's going to be the February 23rd and 24th combat resolution. What's going on around the map? Well... Uh, carriers by Colombo, and hopefully uh, we could maybe nab one with a sub or something. Uh, it seems unlikely, but that would be great if it happened. Uh, Lodric is landing on Java as we speak, and so he's bringing more and more forces to Java. We'll see if he turns to Surubaya or up to Batavia first. Uh, Sumatra, we've got a few ba land battles happening in Sumatra. Uh, Port Moresby. Of course, uh, he's all kinds of action around Port Moresby. Let's hope one of our hapless American subs can get lucky and get uh, shot off at something. We're still trying to get all the men and material we can onto the islands in the South Pacific. But without further ado, let's go and see what happens on February 23rd, February 24th of the year 1942. We also have the bombing of Rangoon, of course, and he will be moving land forces eventually towards Rangoon. At some point, I'll take a whole episode and talk about Rangoon. It's obviously a very, very important place on the map. Uh, it's one of those tipping point places uh, where the game can either bog down for the Japanese or he can really get himself in a nice position. So we'll talk about that. There's so many places on this map to talk about. I'm always like, oh, we'll go talk about the U.S. East Coast. And by the time I, I get over there, we're, an hour is already up. And I'm like, oh, wow. Okay, well, we'll talk about it next time. Okay, we've got a sub. The silver. Holy mackerel. Did I call it? Did I call it? Uh, here's. <laughs> I don't think we hit that carrier. Uh, but I hope you saw that. The silver sides is out here. The SS silver sides. We did get in our scope a Japanese carrier. Uh, but as you can see, his escort ships very quickly got over here and started dropping depth charges. We'll see if the silver sides. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, uh, unfortunately. Now, this is such the frustrating thing about the Allies, uh, the American subs in particular, early in the game. The Mark 14 torpedoes that we've talked about many times. But look at this. Okay. We get two torpedoes off at the CV. Haruyu, uh, one of his main carriers. Now, if you take one of those down, it is such a huge event in the game. We get two torpedoes out. Don't we don't even hit anything, you know? Uh, and if we would have hit it, it might not have exploded. It's just, uh, it's just a killer. Now we have had a battleship that we had in our sights. Uh, we've now had a carrier. Uh, but as you can see, this ends up turning out badly for the Silver Sides, and that's why there was a congressional investigation over these damn torpedoes, because, you know, ultimately we're going to have men die here. This probably won't make it back to port. We'll see. Uh, but they could have taken down a Japanese carrier, as is, we're the ones that get hurt. All right, well, that's no way to start the game. I mean, well, the game, the game has been going on for a while. No way to start the turn. All right, now he's bombarding Ambon. He's finally gotten sick of this situation over here. Uh, our guys have been standing tall at Ambon and uh, Dutch troops out here, and they have held on turn after turn after turn. He's finally decided to come over here and bombard it, which actually can work to our advantage, right? By holding on here, um, 29 casualties, okay? But he's starting to chew up stuff that he's going to own eventually, right? And so if we can force him to do more things like that, that's good. That's good for us. Okay, he's also go going to bombard Port Moresby. Same idea. We've got troops out here. He's determined he doesn't quite think he can take it just with his land forces, so he bombards. Uh, we took a lot of casualties. That's because the battleships got in here. 251 casualties reported. Only one airbase hit. Eight runway hits one port supply hit okay well if we can make him do this turn after turn he may chew up his own runway 
because we've got no more planes there. So whatever happens to the runway is kind of inconsequential to us, but it does uh, work to our advantage uh, that he couldn't fly planes off of there. 20 casualties reported as he does an amphibious assault on Jalo out here. Uh, we abandoned Jalo a long time ago, but he's now going to take that. Okay, now he's got uh, amphib forces on to the island of Jalo. We were sighting some ships off of Ceylon again. If you couldn't tell, this is the ship sighting phase. So these are our aircraft that are sighting various Japanese ships all around the map. You always want to pay attention to this. For if nothing else, you may just get one little tidbit that lets you know where his carriers are, or where he has a major fleet headed. Um, lots of information out here. We did just see his, what I believe are his carriers out there uh, to the east of Ceylon. All right, uh, these would be his carriers. You can see his carriers right here. That's where the Silver Sides was, uh, was stationed. Now the Silver Sides going to have to get out of here. Uh, but he's got, uh, what, 135 bombers coming in on Port Moresby. So he's now bombarded these troops. Now he's bombing these troops. We do have quite a bit of AA in this location. Uh, 12 damaged planes. Who knows what will make it back. We only took 13 casualties, very low for that number of bombers coming in. All right, 50 Sallies, 24 uh, Ans in east of Yan'an on that stack. We damage four planes, we take eight casualties, not, not bad. Now this is uh, bombing in the southeastern part of China. One destroyed plane by flak. Okay, excellent. So we know we actually did destroy one, not just a damaged one. 17 casualties reported. 33 bombers in on this other stack. One damaged plane. 142 casualties. Okay, well, that's a direct hit. 21 more ands in on this. We take 39 more casualties. Two damaged planes. Nine more ands. <laughs> it just never ends. One damaged plane. We take no casualties on the ground. Now he's actually bombing Ai Chang. Uh, he may want to be careful there. We've got a lot of anti-aircraft at Ai Chang just naturally in the units. Uh, 17 casualties reported there. We don't have any dedicated AA units out there or AA counters, but just in the cores themselves, they have AA. And so we've got so many troops massed there, we're bound to have some decent AA. Uh, down here by Wu Chao, one damage bomber, uh, 51 casualties reported. Now bombing west of Yan'an. Boy, the, the war stories these bombers may tell uh, that work out here in China. My goodness. One damage plane here, 155 casualties. Now east of Yan'an, five damage planes, 20 casualties. We'll always take that trade off. Ten more bombers in on Ai Chang. Uh, we damage no planes, take 15 casualties. I'm surprised. I would think that we'd have a good amount of AA in there. All right, these are our planes, the 139WH. As somebody else pointed out in the comments, uh, and these 139s, I think these are converted buffaloes, or is it the 339? I don't know. We'll have to see. Uh, we put 19 up. Eight got destroyed. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember just off the top of my head. Are the 139 the bombers? 
I think the 139s are the bombers. Yeah, that that's the only thing that makes sense. These are the bombers. Um, the 339s that you have that are Dutch are actually just British buffaloes that got you know sold to the Dutch and they turned them into their own fighters. But 14 zeros got up and cap. So what we were trying to do is bomb Semarang, and you can see a little bit of the red out of there. It was coming out of Batavia, trying to bomb these troops at Semarang. Well, he's got zeros over here now, and it blew eight of them out of the sky, eight of our bombers. Now, this is an escorted mission coming in. As you can see, we've got some Falcons up here, uh, the 139 bombers, and we've got some L212s uh, that are coming in here as bombers as well. We'll see what survives. Well, we did get by his initial screen. No Japanese losses. We had one damage, 139, three Falcons destroyed, four destroyed L212s and one damage, and we caused all of seven casualties on the ground. Okay, well, the uh, Dutch bombing runs are not what you hope them to be. Now we've just got some Falcons flying over the top. Uh, this is kind of like a sweep, really. So it's going air to air. The Falcons usually aren't going to do too well in that one. We had one destroyed Falcon, uh, 11 casualties reported on the ground. All right, B-26 Marauders. I've got these coming out of Surubaya because he's got so much uh, ship traffic coming around here. I thought, you know what? Let's put some Marauders up here and try to get a hit on something. Uh, I don't think he was expecting it. I don't think he has a whole lot of fighter aircraft in the area. And so these are out here on naval attack, these B-26 Marauders. One gets damaged. We got to run on a cruiser. I mean, that's what you're hoping for, you know, hope, hope springs eternal, uh, naval attack, we dropped six 500 pound bombs from 6,000 feet, I run my naval attack at either five or 6,000 feet, oh, that reminds me, there are a few things I wanted to talk about this episode, one is people were asking, what about the Prince of Wales, obviously the Prince of Wales got hit at Colombo again, a second time, so we had it at the shipyard, and I forgot to show that to you during the setup phase. It did take extensive damage, but it's still alive. Uh, so the Prince of Wales has 99 system damage, but it has very low float damage. So, you know, look, it's, it's system of operating the ship is all mangled, but it doesn't, it's not in danger of sinking as of now. You know, if it gets hit again, who knows? But right now, the Prince of Wales lives over at Colombo. So that's one thing. A second thing was Stanley had brought up, uh, there's always a heated debate on the Matrix forums about bombing altitude. Uh, and I guess that could go for naval attacks, you know, bombing, and also ground attacks. Now, it had always been, I think, the grand consensus that ground attack bombing should come in at 8,000 feet. That's through thousands of hours and thousands of players playing. They had kind of reached a consensus that 8,000 feet gave you the best results. Uh, maybe that started to change. I don't know, Stanley. I, I haven't read over those threads, so I just can't tell you my, like, my opinion on it. Uh, I've always thought 8,000 feet for ground attack or ground bombing worked pretty well. Uh, for naval attack, I've usually always run them at five or 6,000 feet. Uh, and had good success with that at one time. I know that that was the general consensus, but it could have changed. It could have changed. I don't know. Maybe somebody figured out 3,000 feet or 9,000 feet was better. Uh, you've got to assume the lower you can come in, probably the more accurate you're going to be. Now, what the exact formula is, I don't know. I wish Andy Mack would come back sometime, who was one of the developers of this game. He's been on the channel several times. Uh, I wish you'd come back and maybe he could shed some light on that. Uh, but I can just tell you what I always do or have always done and what I think was the general consensus, which is five to 6,000 feet on the naval, 8,000 feet on the ground. Uh, with the B, later on with the big fortresses, the B-17s, and then the B-52s, uh, that kind of depends on what kind of, what you think you're going to run into. Uh, again, the lower you can run these things, probably the more accurate they're going to be. I can't imagine that they would have modeled the game 
any other way. Uh, that being said, the lower they are, the more at risk they are, and also the more operational losses you may take. Because if you fly closer to water, there's a better chance you're going to hit it at some point. Uh, so that's kind of an answer without giving you an answer, I guess. I wish I had something better for you than that. 14 casualties reported on the ground here at Port Moresby. Eight Oscars uh, circle around Changsha just to make sure we don't have any cap, and we don't. All right, nine, nine Sonias out here uh, on this stack. Just searching around. Don't They don't hit anything. Six more Sonias there. Nothing. Yeah, I was really surprised, actually, that the Prince of Wales didn't have more float damage it wasn't on fire uh, when i checked on it um it just had 99 system damage so that that ship will never truly do anything in this game again the best we could hope for is to get it back over to cape town and just let it sit there you know sit on our 200 points i think it's showing me 880 some plus days but it almost looks like an error for the number of repair days it would take like like it will never repair okay he's getting off the uh the boats at sandpit all right so he's landing here uh now he is doing naval bombardment at oosthaven so he's decided he's going to land on the southern part of sumatra and move here to palembang uh, it's probably the wisest thing to do for the Japanese player. Now, you can mass here, but most allied players are either going to mass in Palembang or just say forget this altogether and be over here at Batavia and Surabaya. Uh, you know, landing at Oosthaven gives you a nice route up to Palembang. Instead of trying to come down here, land in the swamp, I mean, it's a real mess to try to invade uh, and assault Palembang this way. So landing at Oosthaven and coming up here, probably the better idea. He's uh, doing naval bombardment on Oosthaven, 18 casualties there, but he's now unloading on the beach. Now, we do not have much at Oosthaven. Uh, he's going to very easily take that. All right, here comes the land move attack phase. Uh, Ambon, allied bombardment. So he is not assaulting us again, and we're firing artillery at him. We're not really causing any casualties. Hopefully we're uh, disrupting his troops quite a bit. Ground combat at Port Moresby. So can... Oh, this is allied bombardment. All right. So he still doesn't have enough over here to take it, I don't think. And we've decided, all right, we'll shoot some artillery at you. Why not? Uh, yep, allied bombardment attack. You can see he just didn't bring enough here on the first go around. That's good for us. If we can slow him down here a week or two, that really allows us to get more into Australia. 203 casualties reported. Wow, that was a hell of an artillery attack. I like it. Uh, good job, Port Moresby troops, as they hang on. All right, so that does it for February 23rd as we go around and uh, it shows us where our fortifications have built up. We'll see if we got any new units in on Fe February 23rd. All right, we've got uh, a destroyer that was taken out to refit at Los Angeles. We should go look at some of those and see where they were before the refit and see where they are after the refit. I think, again, for capital ships, carriers and battleships and cruisers and light cruisers and even down to destroyers, it is usually worth it as the allied player because you start off the war with such kind of 
not ready for prime time units that you know they really need a refit uh the duchess of bedford has arrived at abaddon um and then we had an amc at aden we're getting some planes out in australia we're getting some stuff at chungking there as it is now february 24th of 1942 steaming our way towards march fairly quiet turn so far i mean he's had some troops that have landed different places his usual bombing runs uh but nothing nothing too major yet we kind of have his troops trapped out here uh he may run out of supply i really like you know where we sit right now anyway um given that I, i'm kind of unhappy that moresby didn't get built up more previously but as of where we just sit right now he does not have enough troops there to take it he's a little bit hemmed in there i'm not sure he can get any supply uh so we could be in a you know fairly decent shape there now he will be bringing more troops around he will take it eventually but the more we can slow him down the better All right, he's unloading at Taberfane, which is out right out here by Dobo. He's already taken one part of the island. Now he's going to take the other part. It's getting awfully close to Darwin there. All right, our coast watchers looked around to see what they could see. Uh, amphibious task force unloading at Oosthaven, unloading at Taberfane. All right, we've got a Dutch sub here. Uh, who found who? Uh, it seems like we fired first anyway, but it says an escort is hunting, and it looks like maybe we got hit. Yep, yeah, sure enough, this DMS was out here. It was an ASW attack. So he found us. Be that as it may, we launched two torpedoes before they could get anything in the water. He then attacked the sub, and we took two hits. Doesn't look like we're on fire. It doesn't say heavy damage. Uh, so we may have just gotten our cage rattled a little bit. He has five ships right on top of Diego Garcia. I think you just saw that. Uh, as he continues to run up on those ports and just see if we have anything there dropping off picking up uh, he's trying to just catch some ships unawares all right we're seeing a lot of ships our aircraft are We've really, he's been fairly slow to take, you know, all of the Philippines. I mean, we're coming up now on March. He really, really should have it all taken by March, or in, in March, the early part of March. Uh, but we've still got a decent force at Cagayan. They actually have some supply. All right, he's going to come over here and bomb Port Moresby again with his carrier group. We damaged 12 bombers, seven Kates and five Vals, uh, and we take no damage on the ground excellent he's had a lot of planes damaged this time he may end up with pretty large operational losses now he's going to bomb the group that's south of cyan this is the big loyang uh stack 3000 in combat value that we're trying to get back over here uh we damage three planes we destroy one by flak we damage one mary as well so four total damage planes all for eight casualties we'll take that every time East of Yan'an, uh, he takes eight damage planes there for 72 casualties. Not terrible. Now into southeastern China for these bombing runs. 25 bombers in here. Uh, no losses on either side. Uh, another 62 bombers up here into southeastern China on the other stack. Uh, five damaged planes, 56 casualties. 
man, oh man, have we damaged. I mean, he's got to have 40 or 50 damaged planes this turn. Uh, it's all about whether they can make it back. They can always get repaired uh, if he's got the aviation support, but, you know, some of them aren't going to make it back. We take 60 casualties on the ground at Ai Chang, and I must have overestimated the AA we have at Ai Chang because we're just not causing any damage or any destroyed by flax out here. There we damage one plane and take no casualties on the ground, but I was really expecting uh, more hurt there. We're going to have to look at that. We don't really have dedicated anti-aircraft uh, counters in China, uh, but you have some units that have a little more AA than others. You've seen that in some places, like this stack out here has caused all kinds of damage for very little casualties. Okay, he was bombing this big group of 3,000 AV again. Uh, we destroy one and by flak. We destroy one Ida by flak. We damage two Idas. We take no losses on the ground. I guess this is the stack we need to go look at for AA. Like, how are they accomplishing that? Uh, he's coming in on Wu Chao. He's escorted by some Tojos. Uh, four Itas, 22 Sonyas. We damage one plane, 17 casualties. And he's going to follow that up with some more Itas. Nothing doing. Changsha, a little bit of a sweep over town. Uh, we just don't, we don't have any cap. <laughs> so, you know, sweep, sweep all you want. Uh, enjoy the sights. Uh, 23 Sallies in here, one damage plane, 59 casualties on this group west of Yan'an. Fifteen Sonyas in here. Uh, we damage one plane, we take no casualties. That was in the light rain. You can see, as uh, we were talking about bombing heights or altitudes, 8,000 feet, that's how he runs all of his bombing runs. And I have to say, he's been quite successful. So, uh, you know, if you're looking at the, the proper altitudes, his 8,000 foot bombing runs have been deadly as can be. Now, would it have been, been better at 7,000? Uh, I don't know, maybe. Would he have taken a lot more losses? Possibly. Uh, you know, those those battles rage all the time. And when I say battles, uh, the threads on the Matrix forum. Uh, nothing going on there. All right, 24 more ands east of Yan'an, one damage plane, no casualties. This has been the worst bombing turn he's had, I think, since the start of the game. 19 zeros up against five Falcons, four 139s, and four L212s. Uh, this probably won't go well for us. Uh, one destroyed 139, four destroyed Falcons, and one destroyed L212. Okay, well... <laughs> they're not they're not faring well but that's to be understood in the fact that dutch pilots are horrible horrible uh just no experience no skills uh they're up against crack pilot japanese pilots here with far superior equipment and uh, this is what happens we lose one more 139 but again, you're eventually going to lose all these planes uh, when he takes Java anyway. We may as well put them up and put up some resistance. Uh, we had five Falcons destroyed there. So I think we lost about 15 or 20 planes all told. Right, continuing on here. Now we're sighting ships. Uh, we see a submarine off Perth. We had radio transmissions near Palmyra. We see all the ships out by Java. All right, 20 Bettys in on Port Moresby. See if we can do some more damage here. Nothing. He just missed. We didn't hit him. He brought these in at 11,000 feet. 
it's in the light range, so that's hurting his bombing, certainly. 27 Nels follow that up. It's too bad we don't have any fighters out here. We could just be picking these off. Uh, now, he does have his carriers here, so maybe the Zeros would scramble. Those may have... Those bombing runs, I think, actually came from Rabal. The earlier ones came off of the carriers. All right, these are our Marauders coming over here and, again, trying to get a lucky hit or two if we can. We had one damage plane, and we hit nothing. We were bombing from 6,000 feet. We dropped six 500-pound bombs. So, you know, I mean, this is enough to do damage if we hit something, but these are really untrained pilots. We're getting them some training. We haven't lost any of those Marauders yet. Uh, we've had a couple damaged. Got some squadrons combining. Uh, usually that's just the remnants. When you've transferred a base, any damaged or in maintenance planes don't come along with. They'll come along once they're repaired, uh, and then they automatically follow on to wherever you transferred the, re you know, uh, the initial transfer, that part of the squadron goes to that base. Then uh, the stuff that gets repaired will follow along automatically. Land move, attack phase. So a lot of times when you see these squadrons merging, that's what that is. Uh, allied bombardment. He's still not assaulting Ambon. We're going to go through a whole nother turn where he does not take Ambon. And it's not looking promising for him here. You know, I don't know when he's going to follow on, but he's going to have to. Allied bombardment attack out by Port Moresby. So we launch some more shells at him. Did we... Well... This time, we don't get any casualties. Hopefully, we did some disruption. Okay, that's about going to do it. We're going to up our fortifications, our airfields, our ports. Uh, yeah, I'm going to move some resources around. All in all, this was a really nice turn for us. Um, we damaged a lot of Japanese aircraft, a lot. Now, hopefully some of those went down. We did lose a bunch of Dutch aircraft. You know, I, I always say this, I'm not trying to soft pedal it. I don't want to lose anything, but though you're going to lose those one way or another eventually. Uh, probably trying to throw them down there when he's initially landing is probably the best use for them. You could save a lot of it and run just cap over Batavia. Uh, but he's going to blow those out of the air in a turn or two. Uh, and these bombers, they're essentially useless. Uh, you may as well try to get a lotto shot and hit a transport or hit troops just as they hit the beach or something. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Um, but they're getting mauled, certainly. Okay, the uh, we have a squadron that's made it down to Trivandrium. We had something that came in at Aden that we'll check out. We have a squadron that just came in at Aden, a plane squadron. And that's it. That's it. All right. All in all, good turn. Uh, as the Allies in late February, if you have a turn where you didn't lose a ship and you only lost uh, primarily Dutch planes and he didn't take any, any important bases, we'll chalk that up as a victory. Uh, it's the small victories that add up into a large one. Okay, I'll stop with the... Uh, uh, the inspirational talk. Anyway, this has been Strategy Gaming Dojo. Next time when we come back, we'll go look at the Prince of Wales. We'll also uh, just check out the map in general and hopefully, hopefully I can get over to the U.S. East Coast and we'll see what we're shipping out. Anyway, talk to you next time. Have a good one.